This is a great question you have, and I totally get being a beginner. Um, all right, so uh, let's take a look at my calculator here. Uh, let's pretend that you're going to throw a ball up into the air, and the x-axis represents how much time the ball has been in the air. So one second, two seconds, three seconds, etc. And the y-axis represents how many feet up into the air the ball is. So the ball at at zero seconds starts one, two, three, four, five feet up into the air. Okay, so we're, we're not doing any major league pitching here or anything. So the ball starts here at time zero. You throw it up into the air. It goes up about three feet, and then it comes back down, and it hits the ground, and it hits the ground a little over one and a half seconds, maybe one and two-thirds seconds after, um, after you throw it. Okay, and so since we're looking for uh, – how long it takes for the ball to hit the ground, we're, in other words, looking for an x-intercept. So that would be our solution, about one and two-thirds seconds. Now, what the exact answer is, I don't know. We, that, that wasn't really uh, what you were asking. Now, to represent this, uh, this parabolic path of the ball, we, uh, we use a parabolic function or a quadratic function. And so this is a function I made up that, that maps out yeah, about what you might might see uh, in a ball that's being chucked up into the air. Now, a, a quadratic function, when you type that into your calculator or you start working with it with pencil and paper, that function doesn't know that you're talking about um, a ball being thrown up in the air. And so there's also this x-intercept here. There's this other solution. And that's, uh, let's see, right about here is about negative one half seconds. So this is going to be maybe be negative 0.4 seconds. So you get this extra solution here of negative 0.4 seconds. And that doesn't make any sense. That's 0.4 seconds before you threw the ball. And so, but you get this extra solution over here. Again, because the calculator or, or, or because the function doesn't know that that doesn't make sense. And that it only makes sense to talk about things that are in the future with positive x values. And so you know, sometimes this happens quite often. And, it, and again, like I've already said, because the function doesn't know any better. It doesn't know that, oh, negative, in, in this case, a negative x value won't make any sense. So that's basically what's going on when you have um, an extra solution that doesn't make any sense. It's okay. It's just part of um, it's just part of how you know uh, we interface with mathematical functions. And that's basically how it goes. I hope this helps.